All right, here goes. Um, gonna just do kind of an unboxing. Just ordered. I ordered this. Uh, well, it's, I ordered this first. I wanted to get the bracelet for. This is the uh, Ferrer Universal, uh, the Bernina, Chronograph Sport. It's a manual wind uh, chronograph. Um, and uh, yeah, I really like the the unique colorways on this and. This is not the factory strap. This is just an aftermarket one. It came with the you had your choice of different kind of leather straps. I think rubber. I wanted to get it on a bracelet, but they ran out. And um, and I asked if they're going to get more, and they said they were. And apparently, they um, uh, improved the bracelet as well. I think they upgraded the bracelet from the one that they used to have available for this and some of the other watches that are compatible with that bracelet. I think mainly the end links are different to fit the specific watch, watch head. Um, but the rest of the bracelet was the same, but I think they've improved the, the bracelet system overall. If I'm not mistaken, they added quick release spring bars uh, on the back of the bracelet, probably right with the lugs are. We're going to check that out. And they mentioned something about um, a new or improved um, micro adjust so with any luck uh, or hope or whatever <laughs> the, the improvement there is actually will be one with uh, one of those um, those ones that are toolless you know like uh, Christopher Ward they had it for some time uh, Zellos basically kind of copied uh, you know the Christopher Ward clasp where you know you adjust the uh, this is not <laughs> bracelet but you know there's the clasp and one side of it there's on the inside there's like a button or switch that you can pull and then you can pull the the bracelet in and out or you pull it out and then you can just ratchet it back in uh, smaller to you get the the size that you want and if if uh if what i think is true hopefully the new bracelet from Farrah will um also have something like that so we're going to check that out but yeah i really i like to get my watches on bracelets whenever possible but um i didn't want to wait to order this so i said okay well i'll just get this first with one of the leather strap options um and um, we'll take it from there uh, let's see here are some of my strap options just for this guy i haven't tried them all i believe yeah, this should be the one that came. It says Vera on the inside. Yeah, right here. This is the one that, that I ordered. I like this kind of tan colored. They, you could have gotten it in blue. And they have, I think, some other stitching maybe. But uh, I thought that looked pretty good. And I also had already had a blue strap. And I was thinking if I wanted to do a blue. Because they have a blue with a like kind of a navy color like this. But with the red stitching. Like right up here like that. Um... But I saw this and I was like, you know what, this would be probably even better with that. So, anyways. Let's get into this. So it came in this box. This took a little bit longer than expected. And uh, so there was, let's see, I got this a few months ago. Probably at least three months ago. Right now it's already December 2021. And this was supposed to come out, they said around November. Maybe late November. That's the estimated time for the new bracelet to be available um, right now. But they never emailed me, or I never got a notification. Like, uh, you know, you would think maybe they might send the if you're subscribed to the newsletter, they might just tell you about uh, oh, we got a new bracelet in, and you know, you might want to check it out or buy it. <laughs> but I don't recall seeing one, and so I I checked from time to time, and I just happened to. Think about it again, and I checked, and I said, "Hey, wait a minute! There it is. There, they have a bracelet available for the Chrono Sport, Chronograph Sport, which is this model, and uh, that's manual, um, manual wound, and of course they have other colors, but um, that's that's the Chrono Sport line. And here we go. So it comes in that you know, kind of textured box, just a little." Fair logo back here and it says fair comes in here and there we go. 
And let's see what it says here. Let's take a look at it first. Looks good. Looks like it. It's a pretty decent taper. This is 20 and it's 20 millimeter lug width. It looks like it tapers. This looks more than just one, two millimeters, not 20 down to 18. It looks like it could be 16 down to at least here. And then I think it jumps back up a little bit where the, the clasp is, but that's fine though. I like that. I think this should be a little bit more of a dramatic taper. I'll, I'll do measurements later if I can, and I'll go over that, but it definitely looks more yeah it's definitely more than just a, a 20 to 18 it looks like 20 to maybe 16. that's cool and uh let's see this awesome and look at this here's the class and i think there is a mic a, a special adjustment system inside where you don't need to use tools because you can see already there's no um micro you know the little holes here for the micro adjustments where you would take a little pin and adjust it, you know, kind of, I guess that's the old school way. Um, those work fine, but um, I do like a, an adjustable one. It's, and um, and the ones like from Christopher Ward and basically the newest ones from uh, uh, Zelos, uh, they, they both have basically the same kind of system. And this probably might have the same thing. We'll take a look at that in a sec. And... Definitely see the quick release screen bars here. Cool. And it doesn't specifically say here, but it should be for my model. It better be. Let's see. Bracelet fitting. Sorry, we're trying to take a Well, well, I do all my sizing. I've done this for many, many years. So, so there's a quick release bracelet. So. But they didn't mention anything about the um, the class. So I'm going to take a peek here, okay? So let's check that out. Slip it out. Oops. Stuck on the tape. And what do we have here? Let's have a better look. I haven't seen the original class, so I'm not sure how, they can, how this looks in comparison to that. Um... But it looks like a pretty good size and I like it's definitely custom like this isn't just a off the shelf like uh, ones that you might have seen many micro brands perhaps used before you know like if it was adjustable so a lot of times they have that one where there's, there's a, this back end piece that you push here and I think basically it slides this a piece out and you can see the, the, the mechanism. I don't really like that system. I know Helsin uses that. Uh, it, I, for me, I thought, um, uh, what's that? Stra strap, this strap code. Yeah, they have, uh, they have di different class for the, for the buckle, for the bracelets, but, um, they have some that have that system too. And that's the first time I saw that. And it works, but it's kind of, I don't like how it opens up and you see like the inside and you have like this thin piece of metal and, and the, the edges where it opens up is rather sharp too. And basically it looks kind of ugly and I would pretty much never use that unless I really had to. Um, so anyways, let's see how it looks like the inside. Flip, lock. And let's see what we have here. Well, it's not a um. Well, let's see what we see how this works. Hope it's not just a dive extension. You know where it just uh flips open and and it's like oh an instant two millimeters. Or no instant, probably like. Five or eight million years. I don't know. It's usually a pretty big jump if it's just going to be like, like that. But yeah, it kind of looks like that. That's that's what it is, unfortunately. So it's basically a dive extension, you know. Um, and you'll get this extra. What is this amount here? Um, mm, I'm not even sure. 
Okay, that's got to be at least almost two centimeters, maybe 15. So, but the adjustment, how the heck are you supposed to? Yeah, I don't really care for this style. I think you have to basically do the micro adjust on the inside, like to, to fit it and then you're set and then that's it. Not my favorite style. It's like, this seems like a pain in the butt. I'm trying to think if I ever had to deal with something like this. Do you... well... No, I think this thing in the middle basically locks in these side pieces because there's like a, kind of like a divot in here that fits inside there. Yeah, see right there you can see like this little slot so and then this this piece right in there fits right in there and there's one on each side so that's how i hose that in and then i think this flexes to allow that to happen but how the heck are you supposed to adjust the um the micro adjust here since it's on the inside does it explain Hmm. Let's see. I mean, does that make sense? This doesn't pinch together for it to, to open up. Well, hopefully, I can make the adjustments and not have to mess with that. Because <laughs> where this is should be fine, but I can imagine. I try not to push. If I had to adjust it, I would rather not, not have it go in more because. Uh, this pivot point right here is going to go in and then you're going to, if it does have to curve or wrap around your wrist, if it's that much more, you'll see, I imagine you might see that much more of a gap on this side. It wouldn't be like a huge, but the closer you can get that this hinge point um, outer towards this edge, the, the more flush it will look, you know. It won't be like bending or, or pivoting from the inside, I'll be pivoting closer to the outside, and so it would just flow more instead of dropping and then going, if you know what I mean. So, and we'll see what kind of, these are definitely not screw links. Uh, I have a feeling, let's, get, let's see, can take a closer look, they are probably they don't look like friction pins, otherwise they'd be like, you know, they'd be, I think they'd be split. And additionally, if they were, you'd see arrows pointing which way to tap them out, or maybe push them in, rather. Um, so, they're likely pin and collar. Great. Well, I don't have a huge issue, other than, uh, which, I forgot what bracelet it was. I think it was on my last Seiko, the SBDN069. It has a pin and collar, but what was annoying was that the pin, the collar was on the outside. So there was like a short one here. Uh, just, I believe, on one side. And then the other side was straight, and then it got wider. So you had to push it in and lock it in from here. Kind of, it, it was just, that was silly. I prefer that if you do have a pin and collar, that the collar be inside the mid link. It's just easier when you're putting it back together that it gets held, you know, that, that piece, that collar won't just drop out as, as easily as it could from the outside. So if it's inside, you can put the bracelet together and that'll hold it in while you slip in the, the pin and hammer it back in or whatever and uh, secure it. Because uh, if it's on the outside, uh, it's a pain in the butt because obviously when you push on one side, that, that collar, if it was on the outside like it is on the Seiko, that I have, it'll start to push out. So you kind of have to work it together so it sticks and then find a creative way to tap and get them to connect back and and uh, secure all the way you know, into the, 
the link. Well, I'm not going to bore you with um, watching me size the bracelet. So luckily, hopefully this these should work pretty well. So make at least installing easy and removing. But uh, we'll see. Um, let's see if I can figure this out. If I, if I need to adjust it, at least I will know what to do. If not, I um, should be fine the way this is. Uh, kind of with this movement right here. But uh, I don't have to size the bracelet. So um, I guess let me come back and uh, I will show you uh, what it looks like when it's uh, all uh, sized and put onto the watch. I thought this should look... Uh, be tight once it's on there. All right. Okay, let's uh, finish this up. So I got all the, uh, I got the bracelet sized to fit my wrist. I think it should work. And uh, I figured out, uh, oh, I took off the sticker so you can get a clearer view of the clasp and the bracelet. And obviously I fit it onto the watch itself. Pretty easy. Coming straight on and off. Let's see if I can do this on script. This comes right off. Just pinch these and then you just carefully fit them back in. And the um the spring bar, the holes on the in the uh, I guess the and the lugs are um, pretty close to the edge. It's kind of hard to do it from this angle. Hang on. Let's see if I can do it kind of on this side. So I should pinch them in. And then oh, that's going to be hard too. How the heck did I do this? Here, you know what? I'm going to need to open this up. Give me a little extra space here clasp open. Make sure they're pretty centered in there so that, that one end is like that sticking out or the other side because I can keep you from pushing it in straight. And it's a pretty tight fit too. So just fit this in. And let go and give it a tug. Just gonna check to make sure that the uh, they're actually seated in there. Okay, that's it. Goes in pretty easily, you see, and easy to take out. <laughs> And it's about as it's much as it would drop because uh, the spring bar, uh, those little levers or switches, whatever you want to call them, fit right between there so they can't get them compressed. But that's, that's a pretty decent drop. So you get some, and this is how wide it goes. And uh, what else was there? Oh yeah, and I figured out how to size this thing. So you can't see it here. You know, the micro address on the inside here. There's like three positions. You can see this is in the middle. That's what, that was where it was set to. And when I was sizing it, I tried pushing it out to the out outer one, but that didn't seem to really be the right. So anyways, after trying on different combinations of number of links and trying to fine tune it with this. I just left it in the middle. It seems to work fine. And if you wanted to adjust it, it's actually uh, a set of spring bars, but you have to flip it over this side. Then you can reveal the spring bars in there. You see that? There's an opening in this tube, which you can't really see on this side. Because you see that? 
So that's what you got to do that. Get spring bar tools. I would recommend getting like spring bar tweezers because uh, it's going to be hard to get in there and wiggle one out and then the other. If you can get both of them out at the same time, you squeeze the tweezers so they both sides compressed and you can slide it in or out a little bit at least and then release and just make wiggle a bit just to make sure it's seated in the the micro holes that you set that you wanted to get it in and this is just the dive extension so it just closes real easily just like that um what else is there much it so you can see this this fits on my seven inch well it's just under seven inch wrist and overall seems like here it looks pretty good probably start doing some new postings fix short videos with this one just to um, just to show it off, I guess, on the bracelet. I suppose it might have been better if the only thing I was, you know, just my initial impressions. The fitment in here is really good. There's like really, you can see it, it's pretty tight and there's no wiggle. Um, I can't really, there really isn't. It's, it's a really tight fit. So you're going to want springboard. Well, actually, you don't need spring bar tweezers because you got the the uh, quick release, which is good because you can compress both sides and slip it in and out straight. Because that's basically all you can do to get that in there. You can't really, there's no wiggle room to, you know, get it out like that. Uh, I have yet to measure the taper, but it looks, I'm pretty sure it's from 20 to 16. But this looks more than a... Just a two millimeter drop, like 20 to 22, looks like 20 to 16. Then it probably goes back up a bit. I would say that's the only thing. If, if there was only a way that they could keep this the same thinness on the class, uh, but you can see it bulks back up a little bit, but it's not it's not terrible. That's something that I noticed. Um, I was worried that this tab, like if it, if it was, see that? If it was... Uh, Wrapping around it a certain way, this part can kind of hang out. I think, like on my, what is it, SBDC 105, the 62 Moss Seiko uh, reissue, the cappuccino dial that I had, the stock bracelet, kind of does that. I think you can kind of leave with a little edge like that. You can see that right in there. Sometimes if it's like, if this is turning up too sharply or quickly up like that, it could do that. But the way it's, I have it fitted on my wrist, uh, not really. I mean, you feel it there, but it's not really uh, anything to, I think it's going to be nothing to worry about. And this side is clean and comes down pretty tight and smooth. And uh, it's got pretty decent brushing. I would say it's... Uh, the only thing is, it's a little bit different than the the case. You can see, obviously, this is radial on the top of the lugs. Would have been better if it went across? Well, maybe, but I'm not bothered by that. I would say the quality of the brushing is different. This is much more finer on the watch case itself, if you can kind of make it out. Versus this one, uh, the brushing is a little bit more noticeable, mm -hmm. right? But overall... I don't think it's a huge deal. I mean, it's close enough. And I'm glad to, to get this on a have a bracelet option uh, to wear from time to time. And definitely changes the look and feel of this if you compare this to some of the other pics or videos I did with this watch on uh, the other straps. This is the first time it's been on a bracelet. Uh, definitely adds a new, another dimension to it, which I welcome, you know, like... Uh, a Daytona or a Speedmaster. I mean, this is not nearly as uh, high, you know, high, it's not, those aren't even high horology, but uh, high luxury, 
of luxury. <laughs> they're they're kind of at the top of their respective luxury tier, um, but they all, you know, a good Kona guy should have a nice bracelet too. And uh, besides uh, straps and whatnot. And I'm glad that it's on here. So anyways, just showing you that. Uh, oh, the, um, lastly, in case you're wondering, if you plan to get something like this, if you have this model or something along the Krona Sport line, one of the other color variants, or because this bracelet does have uh, different end links for to fit other Ferro watches, uh, the rest of this from the lug, uh, end link down should be all the same. So in case you're wondering how to change this, they are pin and collar system. I'll show you here. See here's the collar right there, that shorter piece, and this here's the I guess the long pin that runs through it. So basically luckily this uh collar is actually in the the middle link, center link, as it should be, unlike again that Seiko that I had uh have rather um it has a short collar at one end on the outer, which is a real pain in the butt because nothing holds that in. And uh, it's really fiddly. It's, it's, that one's even definitely more of a pain in the ass to the size. But this one was, these kind of pin and collar systems actually not that bad. Just make sure when you do it, if you have a good set of, uh, you know, uh, pins, like what do I call them, that you use to hammer out, something like this. Make sure this diameter, the thick or thinness of it, is enough so that um, because as you're hammering it out, if if the uh, thing is this head is a little bit too wide, once you're hammering, trying to hammer that pin through, if you can imagine, as you're going down, and then when you get towards where the collar is going to be in there, if it's too wide, you're going to start hitting the collar. And uh, you're not going to go anywhere, or you can do worse things, such as uh, if this if this piece is too wide and like it matches almost the same diameter as as the uh, collar, you could be hitting that from the inside, and then that collar will be knocking against probably the other link on, on the opposite end, and it, it may actually separate it right about there. Because if you can imagine, you start hammering it, hammering the collar, the collar hammers out or at least a little bit, uh, starts to uh, this link piece. So you may get a gap here. So you gotta watch out for that. You wanna make sure this is skinny enough to to fit within that, see that hole, right? The diameter or the hole of the uh, of this collar, you can run through and push the pin all the way through to the other side and knock it out. Um, or conversely, if you really if this thing is too fat and you still try, you know, you get the pin down and again, if you hit the collar area and if you really force it and maybe, I don't know, somehow I can imagine you force it in such a way where it just, it does get into the pin, but it's so fat and tight, uh, it's all jammed up, if you can imagine that. So, yeah, just think about that. If you have a good set, get the thinnest, uh, one that you can get here so that you make sure you clear that collar and get that pin all the way through and it'll all drop off yep that's that's just a little note in case you haven't worked with these before if you had trouble uh that could be one reason why you might have trouble is if this diameter is a little bit too thick and you get blocked by hitting the collar because it's the same diameter it or very close to the same diameter as the, the collar and you can't pass through that hole that's in it. So, uh, with that said, I guess that's it. So, uh, it's gone longer than I wanted, but hope it was at least somewhat informative. So, uh, stay tuned. I'm gonna probably share more of this watch in the coming days, likely. And if I don't, I'll revisit it and I'll share it then. But we'll see. I'm sure it'll be around for a good while. Thanks for watching. Bits.